Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk here. So let me first remind you briefly uh, what a G2 manifold is, uh, just to set the notation. So uh, in this talk, Y will always be a G2 manifold, uh, which means that it's a Riemannian manifold with holonomy in G2. And this means that there is a distinguished uh, three form on Y with stabilizer G2, and this three form is covariantly constant, which translates into phi being closed and co-closed. Uh, and so uh, phi also determines G uh, and is called an associative three form, but it won't play uh, any significant role in this talk. Uh, so let me give you a brief history of uh, creating examples. So uh, first examples, uh, local ones, were uh, discovered by Brian uh, in 87. And shortly afterwards, Brian and Solomon uh, constructed three complete examples. Uh, and then uh, around 96, so presumably a little later, but it was published in 96, uh, Dominique Joyce discovered uh, a number of compact examples. Uh, so uh, by topological invariance, uh, this is roughly uh, 100 uh, different uh, compact examples, but potentially much more there. And uh, by twisted connected sum uh, construction uh, due to Kovalev, uh, Corti, Hask uh, Haskins, Nordstrom, and Pacini. Uh, we have potentially a huge uh, number of compact examples, something like 500 millions. Uh, but uh, I also put a question mark here because uh, there are no uh, efficient uh, invariants uh, which could distinguish uh, all those potentially uh, different uh, G2 manifolds. And so uh, this motivates the search for invariants of uh, compact G2 manifolds. And uh, the uh, essentially only known examples up to date, uh, the, no, uh, the only known example up to date is a Crowley uh, Norsium new invariant and its refinement. And so this is based uh, on the following observation. Uh, if you have a G2 manifold, then you also have a covariantly constant spinner uh, in particular, uh, the spinner S vanishes nowhere. Uh, this is just uh, a different way, uh, by the way, to define a G2 manifold. And so uh, if you represent your G2 manifold as a boundary of some eight manifold and extend uh, your spinner to a transverse section of the uh, positive spinner bundle, which is of uh, rank eight, uh, then uh, would you, uh, so if you also require that this is transverse, then it has a finite number of zeros which are not on the boundary. And you cook uh, up the following combination. So you take essentially the number of zeros of uh, your extension, uh, counted with signs, of course, uh, and you uh, get this uh, also topological term and count this modulo 48. Uh, and this turns out to be independent of choices you made in particular of the extension and uh, of the uh, manifold W, which pounds Y. Uh, and so later, uh, Crowley, uh, Goethe, and Nordstrom uh, uh, came up with the uh, extension of that that is, a uh, that is an invariant mu bar, uh, which is uh, sort of uh, that valued extension of uh, nu. Uh, and uh, the shift over there, uh, 24, will be clear right in a minute. Uh, but uh, first, uh, I would like to point out that this invariant has an important property, uh, namely that if you have a, a one-parameter family of G2 matrix on Y, then uh, uh, the uh, new bar invariant doesn't change uh, its value uh, along this family. And so uh, this invariant is good enough to uh, show that there are uh, closed G2 manifolds which admit uh, in equivalent G2 matrix. So uh, we know that the moduli space of G2 uh, matrix is disconnected. Uh, however, at the same time, uh, for all G2 manifolds constructed previously uh, by uh, Crowley, uh, sorry, uh, the by uh, uh, those that I presented on the last slide, <laughs> <laughs> Corti, Haskins, uh, Pacini, and Nordstrom. Uh, we have 
the same value of the invariance, so they are not distinguished by a uh, new bar. So uh, a different approach could be through uh, gauge theory, and that's what I wanted to outline in this talk. Uh, so uh, for, for this, we pick a, a G bundle, so where G is a Lie group, and for this talk, it is safe to assume that G is SU2 or SUN, uh, and a connection uh, on P is called the G2 instant on if uh, this satisfies uh, the equation uh, here on the uh, screen. And so uh, if you, uh, because you know that the holonomy group is not the full SON, the bundle of two forms splits into two chunks. Uh, one uh, corresponds to the holonomy group and the other one is just the orthogonal complement to that. And uh, equation star is just uh, to say that the seven dimensional piece of the curvature vanishes. So that's the uh, meaning of this equation. Uh, and uh, star can be viewed as a first order nonlinear elliptic partial differential equation. So that is we count solutions to some nonlinear PDE. Uh, so what we want to do, we want to count solutions to some nonlinear PDEs. And so uh, essentially a corollary of this observation is that the moduli space of G2 instantons, that is if you, count, if you take all solutions and divide by the action of the gauge group, uh, then you have a finite dimensional space uh, and moreover the virtual dimension of M is zero because we are on an odd dimensional uh, manifold. And uh, a question due to Donaldson and Thomas uh, in the original approach where G2 instantons were uh, defined is uh, can we define a uh, custom type invariant uh, lambda uh, for which is associated to a G2 manifold by counting G2 instantons on Y and the uh, properties that we want to ask for is that uh, if you can connect two G2 structures by a family, uh, one parameter family, uh, which should be generic one, <coughs> then the value of uh, the invariant should be the same. So, uh, 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 so the, the, uh, here the uh, one parameter family should be a generic one, so it's not absolutely clear what this should mean, uh, but the way to make sense of this uh, has been already described in the previous talk. So where you uh, perhaps leave the uh, world of mat matrix with holonomy G2, but instead uh, impose a weaker condition. All right, but uh, the basic problem is that the moduli space of G2 instantons uh, may be non-compact, uh, which means that uh, G2 instantons can degenerate. And the way they can degenerate uh, was described by Tian. Uh, so, so the theorem I want to cite now is due to Tian, but uh, a lot of work uh, came into this theorem due to Nakajima, also Price and Uhlenberg. And so the statement is this, if you have a sequence of G2 instantons, uh, then there is a closed subset in Y of dimension at most three such that uh, the sequence converges on the complement of the set to a G2 instanton. So what can we say about the set S which appears there? This consists of uh, two bits. One uh, is a zero and the other one is M. And so we know a regularity statement for M, uh, which is M is an integer multiplicity rect rectifiable current. M is also an associative, that is, a, uh, if you pull back phi, this, this is a volume uh, on M, which is a PDE for M and a statement that a zero is small, which in this, uh, which in this case means that the set uh, Hausdorff measure is zero. Uh, uh, conjecturally, oh, sorry. Uh, the set mu must be much, much smaller. It must be of uh, dimension at most uh, one. And so uh, the theorem suggests uh, the following two scenario. Uh, the first scenario is that uh, uh, if you, uh, so a sequence of G2 instantons can develop a bubble along an associative submanifold, or uh, we can see a non removable singularity along a one dimensional submanifold of M. Uh, sorry, of uh, it should be Y. <coughs> uh, all right, so uh, this uh, second possibility is. Uh, so very little is known about the second possibility. I will talk mainly about the first possibility. 
Uh, but uh, because of uh, this degeneration picture, what we expect is the following. So if we start at some point t0, then we have some number of instantons, but uh, as we vary our uh, G2 structure, some of them will uh, die and some may be born. Uh, and so this number is not expected to give you an invariant. Now, uh, the question due to Donaldson and Siegel is, is there a way to compensate for uh, jumps of the number of G2 instantons? And uh, that's uh, where cyborg witten monopole uh, will be perhaps uh, somewhat helpful. But before going to that, uh, we need to uh, review some uh, details about bubbles of G2 instantons, and that's where Fueta sections uh, will play a role. So what are the Fueta sections? Uh, well, uh, first of all, MKN is a frame moduli space of centered charge one as you n instantons over R4. So we don't need to, wor to worry much uh, what the space actually is. Uh, the only important property is that it comes equipped with uh, three complex structures which uh, satisfy quaternionic relations. And the basic example uh, that we should keep in mind is uh, the simplest one, so M12. It's just uh, the quotient of H by plus minus one. Now, uh, if you want to have uh, a manifold, you should exclude zero. But uh, if you want to have a compactification of that, zero will be there as singularity. <coughs> and then a map uh, from R3 into this space is called Fueta if uh, it satisfies the following equation which is of uh, Cauchy-Riemann type, except that you have three variables and three complex structures instead of just two variables. And uh, we can also define uh, Fueta sections. Uh, I don't want to do this in full generality, but the simplest example uh, is as follows. So what you do, you take the spinner bundle and divide this by plus minus one so what you have, you have a fiber, fiber bundle whose fiber is uh, C2 divided by plus minus one, which is precisely M12. Uh, and then a Fueta section is just a harmonic spinner, but to remind ourselves that we divided by plus minus one, uh, we call this object a C2 harmonic spinner. And so uh, an observation uh, which will be useful is that uh, if you have an associative submanifold in Y, then uh, the normal bundle of M in Y is uh, in fact uh, the spinner bundle. It may be twisted, but this twist won't play any role uh, in this talk, so I will just assume that this is uh, untwisted spinner bundle. And uh, the uh, conjecture is uh, as follows. So suppose you have any sequence of G2 instantons such that uh, you see a bubble uh, along uh, an associative submanifold, M, uh, which you, uh, you may describe as the energy density concentrates near an associative submanifold M. Then uh, after you zoom in uh, appropriately in the neighborhood of M, uh, the sequence will converge to a theta section with values in uh, this moduli space of uh, anti-self-dual anti instantons. That is, on each normal fiber, which is uh, R4, you have a four-dimensional instanton. Uh, and so as you vary uh, the point on the base, you have a family uh, of anti-self-dual instantons. And this family is not an arbitrary one, but it satisfies some uh, quite nice PDE. OK, uh, there is uh, a different place where we see Fueta sections, and this is where the cyborg written monopoles come into play. Uh, and for that, we don't need to know G2 geometry. Uh, we will start just with a closed oriented and Romanian three manifold. And uh, L is a Hermitian line bundle equipped with a connection A. And an auxiliary data is a Hermitian vector bundle of rank, say, N, uh, whose top power is uh, just trivial. And uh, this is equipped with the uh, auxiliary connection B. And so uh, Psi is now uh, 
an analog of the spinner in the classical cyberquitin theory. So this is interpreted as a homomorphism from E into the spin C uh, spinner bundle. Uh, so you can imagine that E is, uh, say, trivialized, this won't uh, lose any generality. Uh, and then uh, for each such spinner, uh, we can uh, cook up uh, uh, a one form. Uh, so if you take this uh, combination, this is a Hermitian endomorphism of the spinner bundle. But such uh, endomorphisms uh, can be identified with uh, one form, so as well as in imaginary uh, numbers. And so uh, we can study the following equations. Uh, so we require that psi is uh, harmonic and that the curvature equals the uh, one form that we have constructed before. So if n is uh, one, this is precisely the zyberg witten story, but uh, in this case, n, uh, so the interesting case is when n is at least two. And in this story, A and B play a somewhat different role. So B here is a parameter, whereas A is a uh, variable in the equations. And the theorem uh, that we proved with Thomas uh, some time ago is the following. So uh, suppose we have any family of, uh, sorry, any sequence of uh, solutions uh, then there are two cases. So the first one is uh, you look at the sequence of L2 norms of the spinner, and this is bounded. Uh, then the claim is that uh, there is a subsequence which converges to a solution of uh, the same equations. Uh, that, is, uh, a c uh, that would be a compactness statement for the moduli space, but uh, we have also uh, another case. Uh, so it can happen that your spinner, uh, spinner goes to infinity and this is described by case B. Uh, so in that case, you can't get anything convergent, uh, but uh, we can find uh, a nowhere dense set, set in M uh, and a subsequence such that if you renormalize your spinners to have norm one, uh, say in L2, uh, then this converges to some uh, limit A psi uh, on the complement of uh, Z. Uh, moreover, uh, this limit satisfies the equations which look very similar to the original equations. Uh, the only difference is that the curvature term is killed there. And if you take the pointwise norm of the spinner, this extends to a C0 function uh, on all of M, and that is precisely the zero locus of this uh, function. Uh, all right, so... Uh, uh, why uh, should we expect the limit to solve these equations? Uh, the answer is given by the following observation. So uh, the norm of spinner goes to infinity, but we could have, uh, well, we can renormalize our spinner so that uh, it has always norm one, but the price for that is that uh, we have a small parameter here in front of the curvature term. And uh, as we go to, in, uh, to infinity, that is when epsilon goes to zero, this uh, curvature term is killed. And so what you see in the limit is a harmonic spinner, which satisfies this algebraic constraint. Uh, but this is only on the complement of uh, some subset uh, Z. And uh, not much is known about this set Z, except that it has dimension at most one. And Taubes also has some uh, regularity result for that, uh, but that's more or less all what we know about that. Okay, uh, now uh, to understand where uh, the theta uh, section appears here, uh, let us do the following. So let us fix a point uh, in our base manifold M and then the spinner uh, takes values in the space of homomorphism, and more precisely in the subset satisfying the algebraic uh, condition that is mu of psi is zero. And this is a U1 invariant subset. So what we can do, we can divide by uh, U1 and we have a well-defined map uh, pi. Uh, and we also can project our, uh, well, first of all, uh, the 
classical atia, uh, the classical construction of uh, instantons on R4 due to atia, drainfield, hitching, and manning uh, tells us that this quotient is nothing else but uh, the moduli space of uh, SUN instantons on R4 of charge one. And so uh, if you take any solution satisfying this algebraic constraint, we can project this to uh, the base, that is to the moduli space of instantons. Uh, and uh, the uh, claim is that the projection uh, is a forever section. Right, and this, is, this uh, provides a base for relation uh, between uh, G2 instantons and zyber quitten monopoles, namely, uh, the proposal is that uh, we shouldn't count just G2 instantons, uh, but we should count uh, rather G2 instantons together with the zyber quitten monopoles on associative submanifolds uh, in Y. And so uh, the hope is that uh, if you see uh, a bubble uh, of G2 instantons, at the same time, uh, you should see also a zyber quitten monopole degenerating to the same forever section, uh, and so they will cancel uh, in pairs. All right, so, uh, but uh, what, uh, what do we need uh, to understand better to make this uh, into uh, an actual theorem? So uh, one uh, point uh, uh, which I already mentioned uh, above uh, is, uh, are the unremovable singularities of G2 instantons. And so uh, very little is known about that. Uh, also, we do not quite understand the properties of the two harmonic spinners as opposed to properties of honest harmonic spinners, uh, in particular properties of, uh, and the role of uh, the subset Z, which appeared in the uh, claims that I presented to you. Uh, also, uh, the role of producible zyberquitten monopoles is not quite clear in this story. And uh, singularities of associative submanifolds uh, also uh, is a problem. Uh, in the same uh, vein as it uh, appeared in the previous talk, uh, where you could have a family of, uh, of associatives which develops a singularity and then becomes a different associate. So uh, I would like to uh, spend a few minutes uh, on uh, the second item, namely on uh, the two harmonic spinners uh, and their properties and what uh, can we tell in this case. For that, I will uh, assume that we have just two uh, spinners uh, and I claim that in that case, uh, that uh, is a non-empty set provided the determinant line bundle is uh, non-trivial. Uh, and the argument is very uh, easy. So uh, assume that uh, that is empty and the uh, determinant line bundle L squared is uh, uh, non-trivial. Then what we have, the algebraic constraint tells us, so first of all, if that is empty, psi is defined on all of M uh, and satisfies this uh, constraint. Uh, but this means that the kernel of psi star is trivial, so uh, psi is an epimorphism, and by the dimension count, this is also an isomorphism. Uh, th uh, so this is an isomorphism uh, as a map between E and uh, the spinner bundle, but we uh, assume that E has a, a second top, uh, so in this case, the top power is trivial, which means that the determinant uh, of the spin C uh, spinner bundle must be trivial as well, for this is nothing else but L squared, uh, which is a contradiction. Okay, so uh, the conclusion is that uh, if you want to have, uh, so uh, this, this is uh, not completely obvious observation because uh, you see, uh, so uh, the, the projection of psi is a section of a bundle where the singularity is of what I mentioned four, and we are on a three manifold. So generically, uh, you would expect that uh, psi, so the projection, the harmonic Z2 spinner uh, shouldn't hit uh, the singularity at all, uh, but this is not the case. And so uh, 
somewhat more generally, uh, we have the following result. So, assumes that we have uh, a solution to the limiting equation uh, over the complement of that, uh, then there is an extra infinitesimal structure on uh, that. So if you imagine that Z is a smooth uh, subset, then this requires to a choice of uh, weights and orientations on uh, each component, uh, such that uh, we have a well-defined homology class uh, inside M, uh, and this homology class represents the point correct dual of the first term class of the determinant line bundle. All right, uh, I think that's all I wanted to tell you today. Thank you very much.